Welcome to the house of the Lord, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida. I'm Pastor David Rose now. God bless our time in his word and in our worship today. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please follow along with me as I offer our prayer of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message is recorded in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Let's pray. Lord, open now my heart to hear And through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. If anyone ever thinks that reading the Bible can be dry sometimes, they should read the action-packed sea storms, two of them that... Matthew records for us. At first they sound a lot alike, but Jesus used each storm to teach his disciples something that he wanted them to remember for the rest of their lives and something that he wanted to use to lift their spirits and to lift ours, to keep our heads above the water. 
when storms might happen in our lives. When the first storm happened that Matthew records for us, Jesus was in the boat with his disciples when a furious wind came out of nowhere in the middle of the night. Waves crashed over the boat and the disciples thought they were going to die. Jesus said, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? That's the time maybe you remember that Jesus stood up and he commanded the storm, Quiet, be still. And immediately everything was calm. That night the disciples asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. That giant Jesus showed them that he has power over all of nature. And each new day he showed them more. When they landed on the other side, they were met by two men who were possessed by demons. They had to live all by themselves, tortured in a graveyard. Jesus commanded the demons to come out of the men, and he had them go into some pigs. Jesus showed that he had power over the devil. Another time, when they had crossed over the sea once more, Jesus met a man who was paralyzed. Take heart, son, Jesus said. Your sins are forgiven. Get up and walk. Jesus showed that he has power over paralysis and power to forgive sins. In another town, he healed a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. Then he went on from there and he went to the house of a 12-year-old little girl who had died. He took her by the hand and raised her back to life. Jesus showed that he has the power over disease and power over death. Jesus healed with a power they had not seen. He taught with an authority they had not heard. He loved with a compassion they had never known. Now on this night of the second storm that Matthew records for us, Jesus had just had a day of days. Earlier in the day, Jesus received the heartbreaking news that John the Baptist had died, well, had been killed. By Herod. Jesus took his disciples and he wanted to go away with them to a private place. But the crowds found out where Jesus was and they followed him. They wanted him to preach and teach and heal some more. When Jesus saw the crowds, tired and sad as he was, he had compassion on them and healed them. It was getting into the evening hours, and that's also the day that Jesus fed 5,000 men, and who knows how many women and children were with them with five loaves of bread and two fish. So abundantly that the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of leftovers. Yet in spite of all the disciples had seen, Jesus knew that he needed to teach them in a memorable way to turn to him, to keep their eyes on him, no matter what might happen in their ministries and no matter what might happen in their lives. And after a very long day, Jesus decided that night was the right night to teach them a lesson in a storm. Jesus told his disciples to get into the boat and go on ahead of him. He would catch up with them later. And then Jesus dismissed the crowds, and when everybody was gone and he was all by himself, Jesus went up on a mountainside to pray. What a gentle reminder for all of us to take time, to spend some time in prayer with our Heavenly Father when things are weighing heavy upon us. While Jesus was praying on the mountainside, His disciples had already made it a considerable way out into the sea, but they were straining against a wind that had come up and was working against them. Matthew tells us that it was sometime between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning. That's an awful dark and lonely time to be out in the middle of a sea. They had to have been exhausted. Who could blame them 
when they saw someone walking out towards them on the water and they thought it was a ghost. Jesus said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. (laughs) He calmed their fears. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water and I will. Jesus said, come. Peter got out of the boat, windy and stormy as it was, and he walked on water. Wouldn't you like to have great faith like that? Yes, but when Peter looked around, he realized he should not be walking on water. And he started to sink. Not because he lost his faith. Oh, no. He still had faith, and we know that he had faith because he cried out, Lord, save me. No, he didn't sink until he took his eyes off Jesus. And all he could see was the storm. Peter knew who Jesus was. He knew what Jesus could do, but he forgot when he took his eyes off Jesus. There was a time the great Old Testament prophet Elijah, who knew better than anyone else who God is, forgot when life piled up on him. God told him to go stand on a mountain because the Lord was about to pass by and remind him. A powerful wind tore the mountain apart, shattered rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. Then there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Then there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Then came a gentle whisper. And Elijah remembered who God is. What God taught Elijah on a mountain, Jesus proved to his disciples in a boat. The God who controls all of nature would always be with them and has all power over all things to help them in everything. Jesus could have made Peter float in midair. Instead, he let him get wet. And then he reached out and caught him. Holding Peter's hand in his own, he said, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Is there anything the Lord might be using as a wind or a wave for some good purpose in your life. A storm that makes you feel all alone in your struggle with something? Has there been an argument that has left your heart seasick? Has there been a fear that getting sick or maybe a crash in the market will sink you? Have you had a day when you wish that the Lord was in the boat with you and he would command the storms that are happening in your life to be quiet so that everything would be calm? We know who Jesus is, but so often, like Peter did, we can take our eyes off of him and forget who he is and what he does. Though it will be helpful, our help will not come the day a vaccine is ready. Though it would be helpful, our help will not come in the right candidate. Our help arrived the day the Almighty Son of God allowed himself to be conceived by the Holy Spirit to become the Son of Man. Our help arrived the day he defeated death by dying. Our help arrived the day he returned to life again. 
Our help arrived the day that he descended into hell and danced in and out to proclaim victory over the devil and those in hell with him. Our help arrived the day that Jesus left them in hell and he burst forth from the tomb to show the world that God had accepted his life payment as payment in full for all sin of all people of all time. Our help arrived the day that God created faith in our hearts to believe that Jesus is our Savior from sin and from death and from the power of the devil. Dear Christian, it is a small thing for Jesus to walk on the waters of the stormy seas that happen in your life, to reach out to you, to catch you, to say, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Keep your eyes on Jesus, because when you do, you will remember who he is and what he does. I don't think that he will ask you to walk on water. I think he will ask you to do something that is harder. Maybe he will ask you to have patience and to think of others' needs before your own during a pandemic. Maybe he will ask you to walk through the storm of a long-lasting illness. Maybe he will ask you to take courage each new day through a battle with cancer or the challenge of heart disease, or the persistent pain of arthritis. Maybe he will ask you to walk through long and lonely days of living in a house that is quiet because you're missing the laughter of a loved one. Maybe he will ask you to summon up the courage to let go of a grudge. Maybe he will ask you to ask him for help with your anger and then to listen to him. Maybe he will ask you to listen more than you speak. Maybe he will ask you to have the courage to admit that in some of the storms that have happened in your life, you have caused more of the wind and the waves than you have ever been able to admit. Maybe he will ask you to have the courage to say, I was wrong. Maybe he will ask you to have the courage to say, I'm sorry. Maybe... He will ask you to have the courage to say, I forgive you and mean it. If Jesus asked us to do any of these things on our own, we will sink every time. But the same loving, patient, powerful God who was with Peter, both when he walked on the water and when he was sinking in it, is and always will be with you. Jesus appears to you in his word to take you by your heart and to take you by your hand to say, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Jesus calms our fears and strengthens our faith day by day, week by week, storm by storm. And through each one, he reminds us to keep our eyes on him, to remember who he is, and to remember what he does. As we read God's word, we discover one gem after another, and there is a beautiful one hiding in plain sight for us today in this part of God's word. Did you notice that in this second storm, Jesus first calmed the disciples' fears, and then 
he stopped the storm. Do you see what this means for us? It reminds us that our Savior does not need to stop a storm before he is able to calm our fears. He might let the storms continue for some good reason that we can't see at the moment. But either way, in stormy waters or in calm, Jesus calms our fears by turning us to see him, to see who he is and to remember what he does and to place our hope and trust in him. Truly, he is the Son of God. (laughs) Dear Christian, Jesus loves you. Jesus strengthens you. Jesus forgives you. Jesus calms your fears. Until we reach the peaceful calm of heaven, when we see him with our own eyes and hear him with our own ears, we expect wind and waves to happen in our lives. But they don't need to sink us. (laughs) Not when we have his voice reminding us to keep our eyes on Jesus. Dear Christian, take courage. Don't be afraid. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. I invite you to follow along. I'm going to offer a prayer for us. And then at the end, I will invite you to join with me so that we can all say the Lord's Prayer together. We pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for reminding us to keep our eyes on you. Remind us each new day, dear Lord, because the troubles in our lives and the troubles in our world constantly seek to turn our ways, our eyes away from you and to turn our eyes and our focus back on ourselves. As we place our hope and trust in you and in your limitless power, help us also to show love for others by practicing confident caution in these times while we strive to be good managers of the health and the bodies that you've given to us. Please place your hand of healing and guidance upon our country and all who are in it. Dear Lord, you are the only hope we have for order once again. Protect your church here and in all the world so that we might point more and more to keep their eyes on you. Please protect all the health care workers in the hospitals and the nursing homes and the rehab centers, all firefighters, everyone who's serving in law enforcement, every public servant, and everyone who's serving in our United States military. Please keep us safe and in your care. For these and for so much more, dear Lord, we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear Christian, please receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for taking time to gather with me to be fed and strengthened by the word of God. What a timely, practical reminder for us to keep our eyes on Jesus. I'm going to ask you to please also keep in your prayers the congregation that called me to be their pastor out in California. As this past week I announced to you on an email that after prayerful consideration, I've decided to remain here as the shepherd at St. Mark in Leesburg, Florida. The Lord has so much work to do everywhere. It is good for us to pray like Jesus told us to pray, to ask the Father to send out more workers because the harvest 
is plentiful, but the workers are few. Please do pray that the Lord might send more workers out into the harvest field. Please also, though, thank the Lord for what he has done for us here. Here so many get to hear this encouraging news of God's love and reminders of his forgiveness, and so many more that the Lord has used this strange time of the pandemic, and because of this, we started up the YouTube, and so many more people beyond our walls are hearing the word of God, and their faith is being strengthened by it. God is amazing like that. Then also, keep the congregation in California in your prayers and in every church in your prayers who's calling for a pastor to come and lead them too, to be sharing this incredible word of God with them on a regular basis. Next week, we'll have one more at-home worship service like this. And Lord willing, I fully intend to be welcoming you the first weekend in September, the 5th and the 6th on Saturday and Sunday. Lord willing, I'll be outside to greet you. And we'll continue on as we have, being cautious and make sure we're socially distant while we're in worship and we'll ease our way back into normal. God bless your day today, dear Christian. God bless your week. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I'll see you real soon.